Time now for Media Watch, and I'm joined by Emma James. Hi there, Emma. Hi there. Uh, it's very much in the news, has been the last 24 hours, the death of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of the terrorist group, the Islamic State group. Yes, absolutely. And certainly everyone is still very much talking about it. Many focusing uh, on the images that are emerging and the words too. Uh, Donald Trump, interestingly enough, um, undoubtedly stung by criticism of what he'd done in Syria, withdrawing US troops. Um, this was his chance to bathe in the glory of a successful mission. But historically, he doesn't approve of this kind of presidential grandstanding. Uh, he tweeted this back in 2012. Stop congratulating Obama for killing bin Laden. The Navy SEALs killed bin Laden. Um, it's not the only time that obviously people have been retweeting this today and drawing attention to it. It's not the only way in which they are comparing this raid with the raid that saw the death of Osama bin Laden back in 2011. Um, this image came out of the White House of the Situation Room. Uh, supposedly during the actual raid uh, as it was taking place. Very pensive faces, you will see. Um, curiously, a lot of disconnected cables too. Many people drawing attention to that, wondering why uh, this scene was quite so um, messy, I think it's fair to say, and also why were so many things unplugged. Um, some have even gone so far as to say, was this truly taken during, during the raid? Was it posed? Was it staged? Uh, many, many questions about that. Now, one... Uh, media organization that liked it was Breitbart, um, calling it an iconic photo. They've actually slightly turned down um, the tone of uh, of this particular headline. Earlier on in the day, it read, iconic photo, Trump game face epic. Um, so they're big fans of this image, but not everyone is. Uh, Pete Souza was the White House photographer back in 2011, and he was the one who captured this instantly recognisable image uh, of the faces as uh, they waited to see the outcome of Osam the, the raid on Osama bin Laden's home. Um, he has talked to constantly about Donald Trump and is very critical of him. Um, and he says that well, he, during that day, he took a thousand photographs. So far, we've just seen one image. Clearly, he had a lot of access to the situation room. We've just had one image uh, coming out of the White House so far. OK, so very different uh, handling of, as you say, a comparable sort of operation and an eight year time lag. Uh, not just photographs, though. A lot of focus is on the language, the words that have been used to describe that operation. Yes, absolutely. We saw really some quite unprecedented, I think it's fair to say, um, words coming from Donald Trump, the US president. Uh, the New York Post has gone with his words, he died like a dog, which does seem like a curious thing to have focused on, given that military dogs were actually key to the success of this operation. Um, the Daily Beast is also looking at uh, the words of Donald Trump in this case. Um, Christopher Dickey reporting on this one, saying that really Baghdadi's killing has been turned into a reality show, uh, with some actually very concerned that Donald Trump has revealed a little bit too much about just how this operation was carried out. Um, what he said in his press conference was he died like a coward. He died whimpering, screaming and crying. Um, the idea of this was undoubtedly to destroy one myth, that of a heroic martyr, while building up another, that of this epic US success story, led, of course, by Donald Trump himself. But it's language that really seems to have caught out the Washington Post. They are very much the focus of attention today uh, and yesterday, indeed. Uh, this is their third attempt at writing a headline for the obituary of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Um, the first one called him a terrorist in chief. The middle one, clearly somebody felt that this was a little too harsh and decided to go with austere religious scholar, um, which people really were pretty shocked by. It seems like a very um, meek term to apply to the man who led this terror group. Um, this woman as well, who is a Republican uh, national spokesperson, pointed out that it's not just the headline that was the problem. She's highlighted various pieces, uh, lines from the obituary. Acquaintances would remember him as a shy, nearsighted youth who liked soccer but preferred to spend his free time at the local mosque. Uh, lots of people now using uh, the hashtag um, Wash, uh, Washington Post WAPO death notices um, to basically put a positive spin on people with uh, tarnished reputations. Genghis Khan, noted traveller, dies at 64. Adolf Hitler, dedicated art enthusiast, animal rights activist and talented orator, dies at 56. You get the idea where people are going with this. Saddam Hussein, successful politician, oil baron and noted tough boss, dead at 69. Now, the Washington Post said that the headline should never have read like that and they did change it quickly, but not before uh, the members of... Uh, 
Twitter could have a bit of fun with it. Mm. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for that. Emma James with today's edition of Media Watch.